Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Question Time with myself Harry Knight. I'm the coaching director here at Surf Simply and in these videos I am going to be doing my best to answer some of your questions from the comments feeds on our YouTube videos and social media posts. And today's question comes from uh, James Wade who was asking about the toe-in angles on fins which was uh, prompted by watching episode 5 of our Surfing Explained uh, little animated series. Now the toe-in angle, for those of you guys that, that, that don't know what the toe-in angle is, um, the toe-in is, if you, if you look at the, the fins in the middle of a surfboard, they tend to point straight down the middle of the board in line with the uh, stringer. Um, but the side fins tend to be pulled inwards just very slightly. Okay. Um, if you were to draw, uh, if you were to follow the line of the fin, what you would generally find is that they would intersect somewhere around the nose of the surfboard. And in fact, that's, that's often how uh, shapers uh, decide how much toe-in to put on a board, um, depending on its length. Um, what we end up with is normally between about three to maybe seven degrees of toe-in on those fins, okay? Now, what does that do for us? Well, in uh, episode five of Surfing Explained, we were talking about how the outside fins here are foiled like an aeroplane's wing or the sail of a boat or, or any other hydrodynamic or aerodynamic foil. Now, uh, if we have this aeroplane's wing here, this sort of classic cross section, um, those of you guys remember your physics uh, lessons, um, if we have a flow arriving here at the leading edge, what we're going to see is some of that flow is, is going to separate and it's going to go around the outside, some of it's going to go around the inside. Um, there is something known as the Coanda effect, which uh, basically means that, that the, flow, the, the fluid is, is likely to stick to the outside edge here and follow it around and stick to the inside edge here and follow it around. And then whether it's because you know, we've taken a flow that's going this way and we've bent it and we've sent it off this way, uh, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. This creates some lift in this direction. Um, we also have the fact that uh, we have a, you know, a high pressure down here was this flows hitting the bottom of the surface. And as the flow is sent around this curve, it actually accelerates the flow, um, which creates a relatively low pressure, and that low pressure sucks upwards, the high pressure pushes upwards, and again, we create lift. Okay, so there's a combination of Newtonian physics uh, and Bernoulli's principle. Uh, means that this, this foiled surface is going to generate lift, and in the case of our surfboard here, that lift is going to act at 90 degrees to the fin, and it's going to help suck the rail of the board into the wave face and give the board more traction on the wave, um, which is pretty helpful in, in a lot of circumstances. So that's a little, a little quick recap of some of, uh, some of episode uh, five there. Now, in terms of what we want to talk about now, like why are the fins towed in? Well, what we need to understand for that is something called the angle of attack. Now the angle of attack basically talks about the angle that the flow is hitting the front edge, the leading edge of our foil, okay? And we talk about having a positive angle of attack when the flow is hitting the bottom of the, uh, of the, the leading edge and a negative angle of attack when the flow hits this top surface, okay? Now, a positive angle of attack is really, really good if we want to generate lift, okay? We end up with this high pressure uh, as it hits the bottom, okay? And as the, we, the airflow pulls around this, this acceleration around the curve means that this area of the wing particularly generates a huge amount of lift um, and, and it works very well, okay? So that's our positive angle of attack. Now, with the negative angle of attack, this obviously does not work quite so well. Um, we have the airflow hitting the top surface here, so we actually have a, um, a, positive, uh, a positive pressure on the top surface, which is not very good, um, and a, a, you know, effectively a negative pressure on the bottom. It's now generating lift in the wrong direction. Um, any airflow across this surface um, can start to become a little bit turbulent. Um, we're creating all sorts of problems for ourselves. Now, 
Those of you that are looking at our surfboard over here might be thinking, well, with the fins towed in, are we surely not generating this negative angle of attack? We're gonna have water running down the center of the board. As the board moves forwards across the water, we're gonna have this induced flow of water. And yeah, the, 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 relative to this flow, the angle of attack is a negative angle of attack. But this is not the only flow of water that the surfboard is interacting with. Um, those of you that have watched some of the earlier Surfing Explained episodes will know that we also have, um, as, as a wave moves through the ocean, we, it creates the water, the water itself stays still as the wave moves through it, and that creates this relative flow of water up the wave face and when that hits the bottom of the board that hits the bottom of the board and goes out the back and that generates lift and forward thrust it's a lot of how a surfboard actually works um, some of the earlier episodes of surfing explained um, you can see a bit more about that links uh, in the description below now um, when that hits the board um, as, as that water flow comes up the wave face and it hits the bottom of the board here what we suspect happens is that that flow spreads out um, fairly evenly in every which direction. Now, obviously, depending on the angle that the board is at to this flow, that's gonna affect how it spreads out. And this induced flow running along the stringer, as that hits and interacts with that, that's going to make a difference as well. And the result of all of this is that we actually don't know what the direction of the water flow is past the fins. It's never really been studied properly. There's been a few people have done some studies on flat water, um, but that's very, very different to a board moving on uh, uh, over the face of a wave. And it just hasn't been studied very much. There's one study that I know about, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But suffice to say, we're not 100% certain what the direction of the water flow is past the fins. But with the information that we have here, we can start to kind of get a feel for, for what might be going on underneath the surfboard. So let's have a think about this. Now, not all surfboard fins are towed inwards, okay? Not all side fins are towed inwards. Um, classic example is a keel fin fish, a Steve Liss, you know, traditional big swallowtail fish. Generally, those fins are pretty much parallel with the rails. There's zero or, or maybe one degree of towing. Now, when we tow the fins in less, we have them straighter. If we assume that the towed in fin does have a positive angle of attack, then having a zero degree towed in fin, that would increase the angle of attack on the fin. And an increased angle of attack is not always a good thing. Um, as that flow uh, hits the bottom at a steeper and steeper angle, what we start to see is, is as the flow starts to roll around to the top edge, we get flow separation and, and the, the starting to run off, we get turbulent uh, flow. And this, in an aeroplane, this is a stall. This is where, where our wing starts to stall and the aeroplane starts falling out of the sky, which we do not want. Now, if that was the case, um, that, uh, that, that uh, our, our fish with its zero degree of towing uh, was starting to stall the wing, then we would expect, uh, you know, for, from a surfboard perspective, this means this is just producing drag. There's no lift, there's no extra grip, there's just drag slowing us down. And we know, you know, keelfin fish are very, very fast and those fins help gripping the wave. So we know that this isn't happening with zero degrees of towing. So then, is it the other way around? If, we, uh, if we're saying that, that you know, three to seven degrees is about right, does that mean that we're pulling the fins in so that we do have a negative uh, angle of attack? Now, why might we want that? Well, the advantage would be that, that as we uh, you know, go surf top to bottom on the wave and we're going from one rail onto the other rail, we actually have to break uh, the, the inside rail out. So say we do a big bottom turn as we come up the wave face we need to roll from our right rail onto our left rail and we want the, uh, the, the right rail to release. Now there would be some benefit to having a negative angle of attack at this point because as we started to roll the pressure from the, the water on the outside edge of the fin would actually help the, uh, the board break away and start to turn to the left. Now if that was the case all the time 
then what we would expect to see is that by adding fins in on the board, it would grip the wave less well. It would be harder to keep the board going down the line. We know that towing the fins in more makes the board more maneuverable, but we know that adding side fins that are towed in does help with traction on the wave face, does help the board grip. So that means that we must then have a positive angle attack, but it's probably a very shallow one, okay? And this is slightly, I mentioned that there was one study uh, that was done on, uh, on fins. And the, the, what happened in this is an engineering student in Australia and they, they drilled a hole in front of uh, the fin here. And what they then did was, was strapped some uh, or, or taped some um, little bits of string across the front of the camera. So that as the board was being surfed across the wave face, those bits of string would flap backwards and forward and they would be able to see what the angle of attack was. And what they saw was big variations. Sometimes negative angle of attack, sometimes positive angle of attack, okay? Um, as the board was rolled from one rail to another, as different rails were engaged, as the board was doing different maneuvers, sometimes we had a positive angle of attack, sometimes we had a negative angle of attack. And, and that's pretty much what's going on, okay? So by towing the fins in, we're getting more maneuverability. We're making, we're, we're, we're making the board take on that negative angle of attack earlier and sooner, okay? So the more we tow the fin in, the quicker, as we roll from our right rail onto our left rail, the quicker the fin is gonna maybe help it push us around. Um, the straighter the fin is, the less towed in it is, the more uh, increased angle of attack we're gonna have, the more lift is gonna be generated by those fins, the more it's gonna help engage the rail. So, as I said, I don't have a huge amount of evidence beyond this one study to, to, to point to this going on, but just following the logic, we can kind of see that that makes sense. If, if, if it was all negative or all positive, we would expect to see problems at the extreme ends uh, that we're not seeing. So the fact that we're, we're, we're seeing um, you know, the, the, the angle of attack, that kind of supports the theory that, that three to seven degrees, it's giving us a very gentle, positive angle of attack when we're in trim neutrally across the wave face. Cool, well, uh, that's all I've got for you. Um, if there are any fluid dynamicists that wanna chime in on this and point out any mistakes I've made uh, or add to the conversation that we're having, I would love to hear what you have to say uh, in the comments down below. It'd be great to have you in the conversation. Um, and if anybody else has any questions that they wanna ask, then um, throw them in uh, into our comments, uh, get in touch with us through uh, Facebook or Instagram, and we will do our best uh, to get some answers for you. Um, but for now, for this episode, uh, that's all I've got for you. Uh, so take care and see you next week. Bye-bye.